Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Today I'm gonna to take you on a journey of how I take care of my plants. Once a week I do a general plant care day. I water my plants whenever they need it, but once a week I give everybody a bath. I inspect for pests and I just take care of everybody and I'm gonna walk you through what my plant care day is like. So I hope you are excited for this video and let's go ahead and get started. Of course, one of the main chores I'm doing during plant care day is watering plants and seeing who needs water. This satin pothos, also known as Skimdapsis pictus, curls its leaves when it is thirsty and you'll learn, the longer you have plants, you'll learn what language they speak and this particular plant and pretty much all of the varieties of this plant uh, make their leaves really curly when they need water. So go around and feel leaves, feel if they feel really flimsy or if the plant looks sad, then they might need some water. Here's a larger leafed satin pothos. I think this is called silver satin, and it also is looking very thirsty. When you give them water about 24 hours later, their leaves will flatten out and the plant will perk up and look not so sad. Another plant that you can tell needs water is this uh, golden pothos, also known as Epipremnum aurum. And you can see it looks generally really sad and floppy and that's how you can tell some plants need water and the leaves just felt really really soft as well this spider plant also needs water this is a little baby cutting that i uh, pulled off the mother plant because it's got a little loss of color and the leaves are looking very very droopy and straightened out this is a curly leafed plant and the leaves are usually much curlier so what i like to do uh, for most of my plants is bottom water that keeps the fungus gnat issue pretty much under control because the fungus gnats it, if you've had a lot of plants you have a, you may have at some point had a fungus gnat problem. They rely on the soil being wet to breed. So uh, I'm always going to check for pests when I do my plant care day with my with my uh, magnifying glass there. And I also pull off any dead or dying foliage so the plant can use all of its energy to make more foliage or work on whatever it's working on. My calatheas aren't looking so hot. We did have a slightly minor spider mite issue with a lot of these plants i had to actually say goodbye to one of my marantas because it was just covered in spider mites so i've been treating them on and off for spider mites i am very very close to purchasing predatory mites to just go ahead and mitigate the problem but i'm not there yet i'm gonna go ahead and keep treating them with soap and alcohol and being persistent but this Maranta um, actually doesn't have any problems with spider mites at right now, but the main thing I wanna do when I do my plant care day and I take care of plants is sometimes I wanna give them a bath in the sink and that in, you know involves inspecting them also before I give them a bath. And if you really wanna be very thorough, inspect the bottom of the leaves also, as well as the top of the leaves. This uh, Calathea macoyana is looking relatively sad. I do think that this one has an issue with spider mites as well. I may end up just getting rid of it, but for now I'm just going to treat it and see if it gets any better. I'm going to cut off all of the dead and dying foliage and see if I can rescue it. One of the few members of the Marantisia family that I own that are doing really well is this Calathea Freddy. She just never gives me any problems at all. It just looks really pretty all the time. So when I do my plant care day, I also clean the shelves that they're on, clean the environment so that any like pest eggs or anything like that is uh, just completely eliminated. And I also give my larger plants a bath in the shower if they need it. If their leaves are dusty, I just go ahead and spray them down with the shower hose. So when I do top water, I make sure that I use a well-draining soil, I use a plant pot with holes at the bottom, this one's still in its grow pot, and then I make sure that the water goes all the way through down to the bottom of the pot and out again. You wanna make sure that you water thoroughly so that um, the plant doesn't become top heavy and fall over. 
Uh, if you don't water all the way down to the bottom, you can you know, really cause your plants some problems. But I usually spend all afternoon doing my plant chores and I really enjoy it. It's very peaceful, very meditative, and it relieves a lot of stress for me. And I really enjoy taking care of my little green babies every weekend. It's just part of my weekend activities and I have just found so much peace in this. Um, it's been helping me get through the stress of the pandemic and quarantine and I just I love them so much I just destroy the kitchen every weekend <laughs> It's the next day and all my plants have perked up since um, their water stress situation <laughs> yesterday and I'll give you a tour and let you know how they are doing. So let's start in, let's start, well let's start in here in the living room and then we'll move to the bedroom and then we'll move to the office. So here are the Calatheas. They're looking not too bad. The um, Calathea rosea picta. Uh, this Rosie is looking much better, much more perked up. As you can see, she has moved her leaves like they do. Um, this is like the most active of all my Calatheas and also the rattlesnake's pretty active too. It like really sticks its leaves up at night, um, but um, in the Orbifolia, it like never moves her leaves around, but she's still doing really well. Um, but the, uh, the Macquillana, she's doing okay. I think she'll recover a lot more after I've um, given her a chance to um, chill without her like disgusting yellow leaves, but let's hope she does better. She doesn't look too bad, but she looks kind of like, but we have a new leaf coming here, so it can't all be bad, right? And then over here, as you can see, the um, Raphidophora tetrasperma has perked up. Look at her now. She's looking so much more lively now that she's been uh, fed her water. <laughs> and um, this um, philodendron Brazil looks a lot perkier as well now that she's been watered and my string of hearts I put her up on a candle holder just so it's up a little taller because look how long the string of hearts is and by the way um, I, I did clone this plant um, and right now they're flowering but these little flowers what do they look like to you <laughs> that's what I want to know what do they look like to you Leave an emoji down below. And then we have my uh, asparagus fern. This plant actually had a spider mite infestation and I was considering, ooh, can't see it. I was considering just, um, just chucking it, but instead I just cut off all of the foliage, like down to the soil. And this is like four months worth of new growth and she's doing a lot better. So um, if you have spider mites and you feel like you can just cut the plant and the plant will recover, um, try it. Um, because the spider mites really need the leaves to, le to, le to survive. Um, so um, that is her looking all recovered and new. So hopefully she'll be um, looking a lot fuller in a few months, but I love this asparagus fern. One of my favorite plants because look at it, it doesn't look like some imaginary like fairy tree or something. <laughs> anyway, next to it we have a Schlumbergera uh, truncata. Oops, you can't see it, also known as Christmas cactus. This has not bloomed since I brought it home, but hopefully this Christmas it will bloom again. And then down on this row, we've got um, a bird's nest fern. This is a uh, crispy wave, yeah. Um, this is the only fern I have. I don't um, really feel confident taking care of ferns, but this one has been okay for a while, so maybe I'll, I might get another fern. Um, this, even though it's called asparagus fern, is not a fern. <laughs> I think um, it's in the same family as like lilies, but it's just referred to as asparagus fern. Um, its proper name is asparagus plumosa something. Um, I do write the Latin names down of plants um, on little stakes inside. So is it on, it's on the other side. Yeah, so you can see there the Latin name is there, asparagus plumosa, just because um, I do like common names of plants, um, but I do find them to be a little confusing Namely, th this is called asparagus fern, but this is an actual fern. <laughs> so, um, and ferns and uh, non-ferns are, are, are very different in terms of how they reproduce, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's why I like to use Latin names most of the time. So here we have um, a spider plant, which is <laughs> another common name, but it's actually called um, chlor chlor Chlorophinum colosum. <laughs> um, and this is the variety Bonnie, which makes it the curly spider plant. As you can see, look how adorable it is. Um, it's got many babies on it. I've, I've cloned this plant a few times and given it away to friends, but um, it's just a cute little plant and it's really easy to take care of. Nothing has been attracted to it so far, so we're gonna, we're gonna call it lucky. That's a little Dracaena I have back there. That plant just wants nothing from me. Um, and it's just cute. It doesn't grow very much, it's just, 
cute, you know? Down here we've got my Pilea peperimioides. This is the only Pilea I have in my collection. This is also known as pancake plant, UFO plant, uh, friendship plant, Chinese money plant. It's known by a number of names, but it is a really cute Pilea. And it, it, it's named that way because it looks like pepper, Peperomia, uh, but it's actually a Pilea and it's just really cute. It's, I mean, how cute is that plant? It's so cute. And then next to it I have, this is a, my friend gave this to me because she was moving and it's, she was said it was a Hawaiian tea plant, but I think these have another proper name and I haven't stuck the little thing in there. I think it starts with P, but I'm not sure. I really have to stick that in there so that I know what it's called. Um, I've only had this plant a few weeks, so I don't really know if I'm taking very good care of it, but it's, it's looking good so far. It's got all kinds of new leaves and stuff. Behind it is actually a little um, orchid someone gave me. I don't know if it's gonna bloom again, but if it does, I'll be very happy. Then in the window, we've got unnamed succ uh, succulent. I don't know what this is. I got this and it's just been like etoliating and doing its thing, but like just kind of being happy. So I'm just like, whatever, I'll just leave it. Um, I've got a little Peperomia, stilt Peperomia. This is also called Peperomia. It used to be called Poliolata, poliolata but I think it's called, um, what's it called now? Anyway, it's a really cute Peperomia. One of the stems died. But this is the only stem that's gonna survive. I'm gonna figure out if I can clone this or not. I think I might be able to, so I can stick another one in the pot because it looks really sad when it's just one, but it's really cute. It's really cute, the leaves are really cute. Then I have my um, rubber plant here. This is my Ficus elastica, and it was doing nothing at Christmas when I first brought it home, but now it's thriving and it's growing a lot. So I'm really happy for this to get big. Oh, I put my Calathea outside because it had some spider mites on it, and I was like, you're gonna go outside and fend for yourself. So it actually looks kind of happy out there, so I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, I have another Calathea over here. This is one of my favorites. This is Calathea Freddy. I think this actually has another name too, but this is a, a hybrid Calathea, I think. So so it's, it hasn't given me any problems and it's been really happy on the the table for a few months here. It's very lush actually, um, but it's a, it's such a cute plant and it's just happy all the time and I love it. In the window I have all of my Hoyas and I never understood the Hoya hype until I got my first Hoya and now I'm kind of I'm kind of seriously on board. This is a Hoya Publicalix and it's as you can see it's got really cute splash variegated leaves there and it's got this vine that's finding its way <laughs> everywhere. I'm not sure what I wanna do with it, but for now it's just kinda of hanging out like that. And then I have a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. Um, there's another variety that's Crimson Princess that's like the opposite variegation, like it's green on the, the outsides and white in the middle. I really want one, but this is also called Hoya Carnosa Tricolor. Um, these are also known as wax plants, by the way, so you might have some of these because they're called tricolor because they all they come in with these pink leaves in the very beginning. So they have sort of three colors going on and it's such a pretty plant and it didn't grow for me at all the first, I don't know, maybe like six months I had it. And then this spring, when I put it in this window, it really, it just started taking off and I'm, I'm in love with it so much. And then we have a Hoya Wayetii. I don't know what the blooms look like on these, uh, but they're probably really pretty. This plant is also growing a lot for me. This season, it'll probably slow down in a, in a couple months, but it's, it's gotten, it's grown a lot over the past six months. Um, it used to just, you know, fill the, the inside of this pot and now it's like sort of spilling over. So it's got it's really, it looks like green beans, which I think is really cute. And I really appreciate all of these Hoya. I, I need more Hoya in my life because I think they're so beautiful and they're, they're so easy to take care of. Um, they do attract mealybugs. I haven't seen any around, um, so I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> I've got my Monstera Deliciosa there. She's been through it. She got sunburned a couple times when I put her out on the patio and it had thrips. Um, so so it had, it's got some battle scars, but she's she's pulling it together, you know, she's getting it together and hopefully in a few months she'll fully recover, but she's looking kind of rough right now. Over here we've got some other members of the Marantaceae family. I've got my Maranta, but it's a green Maranta, but variegated, so you can see it's got little splashes of like yellow and white variegation. Um, not on all the leaves, but on some of the leaves. So check that out, isn't that cool? Um, and this is my little Tenanthi. Um, some people call these um, fishbone Calathea, but they're really um, Tenanthi. And this is called Tenanthi Burl, Burl Marks, or Burly Marks. Um, and it's just been, it's been a really cute plant. I got this from plantarena.com and it's just, it's so cute. And it came in this really cute vase. Check that out, it's so cute. And behind it, I've got my Stromanthi Trio Star. 
I think it's doing okay. Um, I've had it a few months. I've had it since February, I think. And I think it's doing okay. I do think it had a little bit of the spider mites um, like a few weeks ago, but I have been treating it and it's been okay. It's been putting out new leaves, so I'm just gonna keep treating it and see what happens. But you know, it, this one preys also. It like moves its leaves up and down depending on the time of day and how much light there is. So it's very, it's very fantastic to watch them dance. We've got a snake plant here. This gives me no trouble. There's been a few new leaves growing here. I think these are new ones that have grown since I brought it. I got that from Ikea actually for $15 and it's been amazing. It's been a total rock star. In my bedroom, we've got um, this little snake plant that I, I put on my husband's nightstand. He doesn't take care of it. I still take care of it, but it's just so cute. I got this little guy at Marshall's, believe it or not. I walked by it and I was like, that's a real plant. And I took it home and it's just been growing ever since and I love it. It came in this, the same little container. I may have to repot it at some point, but I just think it's adorable and it does really well wherever you put it. So if you're looking for a plant that you can just totally ignore and like it won't be mad at you, snake plants. On my nightstand, I have an anthurium. Um, this is a really cute plant. It has one bract left. Normally, this is like full of you know these flowers. This is the flower actually, um, and this is the little bract around it. And they're you know they're pink. I think this is also called flamingo flower if you have one of these. But it's so cute, and it's been just a really nice grower. I really like it for the foliage. This is actually a new leaf, and they look like hearts. So how pretty is that? Um, I really like this plant just for the foliage, not for the flowers. On top, we've got a Pothos uh, Marble Queen. Uh, this is also known as Epipremnum Aureum Marble Queen. So she's got some really nice splashy variegation. This is like a very common plant that you'll find at the grocery store. Super easy to take care of. Don't overwater it. Um, but you know, this also is one of those plants that thrives on neglect. Like if you leave it alone, it's it's probably gonna be okay. Um, around it, I've got an, a variegated ivy. I probably, a lot of people talk about these as being like spider mite. Um, attractants and pest magnets. I haven't had any problems with this one, except for um, there was a mealybug invasion like a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago, and I haven't had any pest problems with it since. And it just stays over here and minds its own business. And it kind of just grows and I let it go. I'm gonna watch and make sure it doesn't adhere itself to the wall because I think they do do that. And I think they can actually like rip and damage the wall. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it, but I don't know, it's been really cute. I bought it right at the beginning of my like house plan mom journey and I've never seen a spider a single spider mite on it so maybe I'm just probably shooting myself in the foot by saying that <laughs> over here we've got a purple shamrock this is a uh, oxalis it's kind of an off and on kind of plant like it grows really fast and it will drop a bunch of leaves and then they'll all grow back again it's really weird I think this is a um it's a bulb, so you know I think they die off periodically and they go into dormancy and then they just come back again. So they're really cute. They look like butterflies and they stick their little faces up against the window like all day long. They're, it's a really cute plant. This is a variegated jade plant, also known as a crassula, I think. Um, this I got this on the same seller I got the Ranta from on Etsy and it's just a really beautiful plant. The thing about jade plants and uh, crassulas and I, mean, I feel like a lot of succulents in general is don't water this until you go, you can go around and you can squeeze it. And if it feels like it's got, if it's, it feels really squishy, um, then maybe it needs water. But it feel, if it feels really firm um, and, you know, kind of solid, then it probably doesn't need water because that's where the water is stored. So a lot of people over, over water these and like leaves fall off and stuff like that because that's think they're a little defense mechanism so just be careful not to give them too much water only you know go around and feel the leaves and see if it you know feels squishy if it feels squishy water and I always advise watering these guys from the bottom uh, I feel like they just like it better you know Right here I have a Haworthia. Um, this has been, this is one of my only f plants in a container with no with no uh, drain hole. I, again, I don't advise that. Um, when I do, because it's so small, I can get away with it. When I do water it, I'll put the water in here and I'll turn it completely over to drain the water, the excess water out. Um, and it seems to like it in there. There's a bunch of babies actually in here that I could separate and make new plants. Maybe I'll do that one day when I'm bored. Here I have one of my, my favorite plants. This is um, Philodendron Burl Marks. And he is, or she, I don't know, um, they. <laughs> it's a really beautiful plant and the leaves get really beautiful and shiny when you shine them up. Um, I have it on like a, I have it sort of standing up on a stake because I think these normally are like a creeping 
plants, um, but I love it and I think it's a really cute <laughs> plant. It like it's, it sticks its little faces, you know, out in the window. I, I should just open it and let it have some light, but um, it's just a really cute plant. I love this. Then over here we've got a philodendron lemon lime. The juice, uh, it looks like chlorotic, like it's lost green, but that's just the way that it looks. It's like, you know. It's like the sprite of philodendrons. <laughs> like it's got uh, like yellow and light green variegation, uh, not variegation, but coloring, and it's really cute. Um, next to it's a little cutting I got from my mom last summer. Still not a lot of growth on it, but um, you know, there's there's definitely new leaves coming all the time. So hopefully it'll be a big plant one day. And then here I have a philodendron micans. Um, I don't know if that's really the correct name, but it is a fuzzy leafed philodendron. So all the leaves are like velvety and it's really cute. The leaves on this plant are incredibly small. When I purchased this, um, the plant, the leaves were like as big as this and then all the new growth has come in small like that. So I don't really know um, why that is, but it's it's been growing like gangbusters. So I'm just not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna mess with it and question it. I'm just gonna go with it. And finally in the office, look how perked up the pothos, the golden pothos is in here. If you remember what it looked like yesterday, it looked really sad, but this morning it's all perked up, looks so much happier and healthier and shiny. Um, and then we've got the spider plant, which I put in this little container because I think it'd be a lot cuter and it's got all of its color back. So um, I find that when these need water, they get a little chlorotic, they they lose some of their color, but when you, as soon as you get them their water back, they're green and vibrant again. So um, that's something to look out for too. If you are not sure whether or not your plant needs water, sometimes they change color and they get really, they look really sick. So um, give them water when they look kind of stressed. Here is the Scandapsis pictus that was yesterday really, really thirsty and needing water. And the leaves were all curled up before and now now, um, overnight they have absorbed all the water and you can see they've all flattened out pretty much. Um, there are still a few that are kind of curly, but for the most part they look a lot healthier and a lot less stressed. And the same for the big Scandapsis, uh, Scandapsis pictus. This is another variety called, what is this one called? I forgot, but I'll put it on the screen. It's got huge leaves. I think this is like Silvery Ann or something. Um, huge, massive leaves. This is so beautiful. Um, I'm hoping eventually it'll start vining, could, but right now it's just sort of crowding around in that pot. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I think it'll start vining eventually. Um, but this is such a pretty plant and again, has given me no problem since I brought it home. Last but not least is my Monstera adansonii. She is kind of a beast. <laughs> what, I, what, what I really wanna do is hang this plant. Um, it's kind of, I mean, as you can see, it's a little out of control. Um, it's just putting out new growth, just like mad. So um, I have one yellow leaf that I probably should cut off here, but it's, a beast. It's a beast. This plant is really in demand right now um, and very expensive if you want to buy it in places. I don't know what the supply is like right now, but when I bought this plant, it was like $75, but I got it for my birthday, so I didn't really have to pay for it, but it was an expensive plant and I, for me, it was worth every penny because it's so beautiful and grows and grows and grows and doesn't really, you know, mind if I miss watering it for a few days. So it just, it, you know, it hangs on and then when I water it, it's like, oh, we're perked back up, we're good. <laughs> okay, guys, well, that was my plant care routine for, um, for 2020. Let me know what your favorite plant was during this tour and if you are afraid of house plants, let me know if or not you're going to go out and actually buy a plant because I highly recommend it. It changes your environment. It makes, it just brings something to the environment that you can't replicate with a plastic plant. So I hope you guys are having a great morning, great evening, great afternoon, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.